So I've got a few hours uh, to kill at home. So I've got the contacts D out and uh, I fitted on it the Carl Zeiss Jainert Biotar 58mm lens. And the idea is just to walk about my garden and use this lens wide open uh, at f2 because this lens can produce some beautiful out of focus uh, rendition. Now it's quite a bright day so to keep the shutter speed uh, at a thousand or thereabouts of a second I fitted an ND8 filter and uh, I'm using Ilford FP4 so instead of rating it at uh, 125 ISO I'm going to rate it at uh, 12 ISO just to compensate for that loss of light. So I'll uh, have a walk around now and then you can have a look at the pictures and this is what you can do in your back garden using a lens like the Biotar. Right before I go uh, take the pictures uh, this is the camera now and the lens and you can see I've got the uh, eight times uh, ND filter fitted and, and that takes away three stops of light so it, it brings my FP4 uh, down to about 12 ISO and it means that I've, I can use the camera handheld without a tripod and it gives me a lot more uh, freedom for composition etc. Now I'm going to set the lens um, to which uh, uh, closest focusing distance and just leave it at that and then I'm just going to move the camera up and down until I see uh, part of the image the part that I want to come into focus and the rest uh, to go out of focus and, and I think that will uh, create a very artistic look to the image especially using this Biotar lens. Now I'm not going to show you uh, every picture that I'm going to take but I will show you uh, two or three and it'll just gi give you an idea of uh, how I'm going to work this. The meter that I'm going to use again it's a simple Seaconic uh, instant light uh, meter I'm going to take instant light readings use, using that and go with the readings from this. So I'll just show you now uh, uh, two or three pictures that I'm going to, going to take using this setup and how I'm going to work it. But uh, as I say, hopefully these pictures will turn out and they will create this with a, a thin depth of field. So I'm just going to get parts of the image in focus and the rest will go out of focus. And fingers crossed, I'm going to come up with some more artistic looking pictures than you know setting it up on a tripod and stopping the lens down so I get more depth of field. I want a very thin depth of field and this lens close up at f2 will give me that. So I'll take the first picture now and I'll show you how I'm going to work it. So this is the first uh, image these white uh, flowers lovely little white flowers and a, a nice green background they're in uh, sun and partial shade um, I forgot to mention that I'm going to develop the uh, Ilford FP4 in Adox Adenol and dilute it uh, 1 to uh, 50. Um, Adenol is great, it's a great developer because you get this lovely grain from it. Uh, it's a compensating developer so it'll help me in the highlights and whatever is sharp within these images uh, it, it, it produces a really good accutance in, in other words edge sharpness. So the, the areas of the image that are uh, actually in focus will be very sharp. The way I'm going to work it is uh, open the lens wide open to f2 and uh, take a light reading. I'm going to use this and a light meter, the Seaconic. There's a movement in the flowers but it doesn't matter, the shutter speed will freeze it. So that's telling me one thousandth of a second at f2. So set the 1000th of the camera, wind it on, and then I'm just going to look over the look through the viewfinder until the image comes into focus or parts of the image. Uh, there's going to be very little in focus. And just work like that and scan around until I get a decent composition and then take the photo. So I'm moving the camera to focus. And that's the first picture and that's how I'm going to work it with all the pictures. I'll show you a couple more and then we'll uh, see the pictures. Fingers crossed they're going to turn out. Right, I really like the look of this because I don't know if you can see it, there's a little daisy at the bottom. And uh, 
this hollyhock I'm going to focus on, on just a part of this and so we'll get some of this in focus then it'll go out of focus and we'll, out of focus and we'll see this lovely daisy but out of focus I'm not after full depth of field I'm after an effect here that will create pictures that are, are different I take a light reading I think it'll be the same as the first one yes a thousandth of a second F2 right just as I did with the other one just move up and down find my composition that looks okay get the shot so that's uh, that one right move on, on see if I can find another one as I say I'm not after this uh, loads of depth of field etc it's just a very thin plane of focus with everything else being out of focus and hopefully it's going to give uh, some uh, really artistic looking pictures especially with this biotar lens it's uh, beautiful in the out of focus areas so I might include a uh, uh, one or two ornaments that they have in our garden and I quite like this one I think the contrast of this against this fence is going to look uh, really nice so I'm going to do the same thing as I've done with all the others and I th again I think the light's going to be the same yeah it's near enough a thousandth of a second f2 wind the film on thousandth of a second f2 and then as before just move the camera until I'm at its closest focusing distance. Check the composition and take the picture. I think that, that should turn out all right. So I love the texture in this. The um, the focusing on this camera is one of the best I've ever had. I don't know if you've ever used a contact T with the Stevens screen, and this is what this camera has. And it's uh, it looks quite a little bit dull, a little bit grainy when you first get one. But my goodness, it, the image really pops in and out, out of focus. There's no uh, crosshairs, um, there's no split image in the, in the viewfinder. It's just a plain screen, but it is so easy to focus. It's one of the best focusing screens I've ever used. Right, move on and see what else we can see. Right, uh, I think I'm going to uh, take this uh, picture of these flowers and um, keep in mind I'm not trying to get detail in the flowers I'm just using this wafer thin depth of field to give an effect and uh, looking, at, looking at it through this lens and then just scanning the image to find the composition I'm after it takes on a really different perspective I'm after an artistic image I'm not after detail and the beauty of the flower just an artistic look to it and uh, I'm, I'm just hoping that this the way I'm working it's going to do that now you might think it's hard looking through an ND8, ND8 filter uh, to get focus but actually it's quite bright it's not that bad at all so I can see the focus quite clearly now these flowers are pink uh, but I think they'll turn out very light in the image to give the uh, effect that I'm after. So I'll take a light reading. If I can find it. And the light's uh, dropping a little bit. It's 500th of a second at f2, so set that on the camera. And then do the same thing. At the closest... Uh, focusing on this lens and then just scan the image until I want what's in, what I want in focus is just in focus try and find a nice composition and uh, hopefully I'll get as I say the effect that I'm after right these uh, gases might make a nice abstract uh, picture so the same thing, take a light reading, it's 
It's a little bit darker here and uh, the light meter is saying 250th of a second at f2. Uh, with this camera it's 200 of a second but uh, that won't make hardly any difference. So again, close this focus with this lens set, f2, and then just scan the image and look for a nice composition and then just see what I want in focus. And that's that one. Now I'm not going to video anymore, just repeating it. I'm just going to nip around the garden and take some more images, but you know, <laughs> this uh, camera is completely manual, you have to set everything on it, there's no electronics in it. The lens again is completely manual, no autofocus. It's uh, a lens you have to do stop down metering and then I've got a handheld light meter. So there's no fancy electronics, no autofocus. You don't need that. All you need is a little bit of imagination and just try things and see what you can come up with and you might be surprised what type of pictures you can create by thinking what you might call out of the box. So let's uh, look at the pictures that I've taken with this uh, setup. Right, I hope you enjoyed the pictures that I took with this vintage setup, the Contax D and the Carl Zeiss Jena 58mm f2 Biotar lens. A really nice pairing. They work great together. Now I think in this uh, really technological age that we live in, the cameras seem to be getting more advanced, more functions added, and I think uh, at some stage they will incorporate uh, AI. And I think we're moving away from the basic core of photography. That in this video I've shown you all you need is a 
a camera, a way of controlling the uh, shutter speed and a lens to control the depth of field. And working with those two tools, we can create, we can make some really creative pictures. Uh, the um, the shutter can be used uh, uh, fast to allow us to open the lens up, which I did today, F2. It can be slowed down uh, and to allow us to stop the lens down to create uh, more depth of field. It can be slowed really down to give um, blur in the pictures, intentional blur. So there are many ways that you can use these two uh, tools on the camera. And as I say, because of all this uh, advancement in modern cameras, I think we can get a little bit lost uh, how simple photography can be and just having a, an understanding of how the shutter and the aperture work. And hopefully this video shows that uh, by using those two tools that you can come up with some uh, creative pictures. Right, uh, that is the end of the video. Um, if you uh, enjoyed it, please uh, give me a thumbs up, a like. Uh, better still, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. And as I always say, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video. Use the two main controls on your camera. Open the aperture as wide as it will go. Get as close as you can. Set the appropriate fast shutter speed. Use your imagination and be creative.